What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Today, I want to show you how I work a pop bar. That is right. Ton of different companies make them. Uh, Six Sense, Rapala, I mean so many different people make some type of popping bait. Well, I kind of work mine a little bit differently than I think a lot of other people do. And I want to walk you through essentially both methods. Um, the way that most people work a pop bar and the way I work a pop bar and the way that I worked my pop bar to get my bites on late caffeine and end up in fifth place in that fishing tournament. So, we're gonna head over to a little pond that I know and uh, in theory it should be post spawn right now. Should be, we'll see. Uh, and hopefully we can get a top water bite going. Let's go baby! All right, everybody, welcome back. So, making my way over this little pond, it seems like the carp are either mating or doing something crazy. But I went out and I grabbed two pop bars this morning. The traditional, it's a larger pop bar from Rapala. And this is a Lunker Hunt pop bar. I think uh, between these two, I should be able to find myself a decent fish. They both are a little different. You know, the, the Rapala has a white tail. I personally think the white tail is a little bit of a better option. Um, I like a white tail. I think it looks like a dying fish. Um, but the Lunker Hunt has a really good weight to it and has a nice little rattle. I think that that could get a bite as well. Let's, uh, let's get right into how I, uh, how I do this. All right, so we're gonna start with the traditional one. A little bit bigger. It's got the white tail that I like. And for me, oh, well, shoot. All right, guys, so we're going to start with the Lunker Hunt real quick. I do think I'll do better with the other one, but I just want to go over the way I retrieve it. So for this, there's two ways. The traditional way is some really big pops. Uh, and I do think that you can get a lot of bites with this, but if fish see a lot of top water, you know, they may not go after it. I think that there's a way, a chance that, you know, it'll scare fish away, but it does have a lot of drawing power this way. Those carp are mating. Oh, and there's one right there. Oh! Well, we lost him, but you get the idea. Um, with those big pops, you can definitely get a bite. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another one real quick. The way I prefer to work one is a little bit more subtle. I like to go slower, uh, really keep it in that water column for a long period of time. So when you toss it out, a couple small pops and let it sit. One, two, three, pop, pop. One, two, three. Now for me, it makes the bait move a lot more. Look at how much that strides left and right. Um, I personally think that this is a, a great way to use this bait. Uh, the pop isn't as large, so it won't have as much drawing power. But for me, I get a lot more bites doing this. Um, on a lot of different bodies of water. And I think because most people don't work them this way, and it looks a lot like a dying fish. And to me, that is something that's important for working this type of bait. <clears throat> All right, now we got the bigger pop bar tied on. cast a little bit further and more accurate with this guy and again going back to my method smaller pops and let the rod tip do all the work it's kind of similar to the concept of a jerk bait um, you don't want to have it be too crazy but nice even pops And sometimes you can, you know, vary the retrieve, but I really like a pop, pop, weight, pop, pop, 
wait. And when you set the hook, you don't have to, you know, set it like you're worming or anything like that. It's real basic. Uh, just kind of sweep to the side, tighten it down, lock them in. Let's make that same cast using the faster method. I am a little bit further out, but. And again, it's all about what the fish want to see. You know, sometimes they want to see slow. Sometimes they do want to see a fast method. But you have to find out what works for you, for your body of water. And I do think that the faster method um, will also get you, you know, a couple misses here and there. You are going to want to wait. Um, once the fish hits it, you want to wait a little bit to set the hook. You want to make sure that they do take it, obviously. You don't want to just swing right when you see the blow up. You could scare the fish off, uh, do all sorts of things like that. Look at that big dead shad. Holy macaroni. All right, let's try right here. Hey, carp, you're kind of in my way. Oh, and there's one right there. Mm. Mm. And I was able to draw in that big bite. I think this guy was protecting fry. So I'm going to try and get him back in as quick as I can. Now, oh, that's a good looking fish. Hey there. Look at you. You don't look all that beat up from whatever it is you were doing. Going back. Oh, that was fun. Let's see if we can't get some more. To me, this is a great post spawn lure. <clears throat> it really gets bass thinking that it's trying to eat their fry with those large pops. <clears throat> and it also can look like a dead fish for when you're trying to, uh, good Lord, are those scales? I think I was just pulling in crazy carp scales. But for me, that's really the key to work in a pop bar. You gotta, dang, those are some big carp. You wanna catch some carp, man, hit me up. Again, I just like to keep it real close to the bank. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't get a bite out deep, because you can. Uh, this lure does have that kind of drawing power. Oh yeah, there we go. I don't know if they're going to be in these weeds or not, but... You know, normally you can't really get a pop bar through that stuff. These weeds are really high up, so it just kind of skims through. Oh, and there's one. And that's using my method there. Boy, he is jumping all over the place. Calm down, big guy. Come here. Whoa! Look at that beast. 
Yeah, you need to calm it down, buddy. So I can get some hooks out of you. Nice and calm, okay? Don't do it. Yep, that's what I was worried about. You are fat. You are a happy, fat fish. Well, thank you so much for being here and playing with me. I think you are, you're a stud. You're a stud. So, go on, be with your friends. Get bigger. Super cool. All right, another pop -ar fish, just like I was saying, working it through those weeds there. Hit it right after the weeds. Um, and again, you know, working it a little bit slower with that pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause. Um, now here we're gonna do for the next stretch, let's, uh, let's do the really quick method. Let's see if we can't get another bite. I do think that the, the, the bigger method, the, the faster uh, method is gonna get you consistently probably a bigger bite. I'm gonna really slap this boy around. I'm gonna really kind of cover some water with it. Rip it around like a jerk bait. Um I do think this will get you a much bigger bite on a more consistent basis than the way I work it. Uh, I think the way I work it will get you more bites. But again, I really like that white tail on these. <clears throat> um, to me, if I'm looking for the perfect pop bar, it's going to have some kind of shag color. You know, obviously you want to match the hatch, but for me, the places I fish, shag color white feathered tail uh, that to me is just the money combo let's see if we can't get a big fish here all right guys i hope you enjoyed this episode i um i like throwing a pop bar it's something i really enjoy doing and if you like throwing a pop bar please leave a comment down below let me know what you think um if you don't like throwing a pop bar tell me why other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. And until next time, happy foozing. Fun fact, guys, I was fishing here last night and lost this. <clears throat> and here she is. My favorite pop bar. I was going to do the video today on this. Which is my six cents pop bar. I'm really happy that I was able to get it back. You can tell it was been in here all night with all this crap on the back, but there she is. Heck yes. <laughs>